Okay, very good morning. It is Wednesday the 5th of February. Uh, don't forget, if you are watching this on YouTube, to subscribe to the channel for our daily updates and live events that we'll be covering. Uh, but getting straight into what we're looking at this morning, a uh, quick update on coronavirus, of course, but we're going to have a look at Tesla. I'm sure you would have read the headlines by now or seen the stock price movement uh, yesterday, but we can have a quick conversation about that. Uh, we're also going to talk about oil prices, given the, the technical meetings that's been happening with the OPEC plus countries and where does that stand at the moment. Uh, we're also going to have an update on the caucuses in Iowa. What's the situation there and is it important for markets? And there's a couple of corporate earnings coming out of Europe to be aware of this morning, BNP Paribas, Siemens and, and the like. Starting off though, before I go into in the graphics that side of me at the moment, let's just have a look at the overall sentiment on charts as we reside this morning. And the Dow finished up about 400 points yesterday. So uh, the impact or fears, if you like, of the, the coronavirus seem uh, quite a distant memory in the rearview mirror nowadays, uh, albeit we continue to uh, remain somewhat vigilant and monitor the situation. But for the moment, uh, the fact that it seems to be still somewhat contained to the borders of mainland China uh, seems to have downplayed the situation for the moment at least uh, and the fact that it hasn't turned into a full pandemic as yet no, has been yeah. welcomed by the market so elsewhere uh, just having a look at things oil prices have been just steadying out overnight uh, the ellipse that I've got on my chart here signifies the release of the API crude oil infantries of which we had last night uh, which I will show you the numbers shortly uh, but that was when we defined the kind of low point we saw a bit of a pickup overnight in Asia um, and probably a move in sympathy because Asian equities actually saw their first back-to-back -back rise that we've had since the virus outbreak begun about two weeks ago so Asian markets continuing to pair back Chinese markets specifically from those heavy losses that were seen on the reopening of trade and that big gap down we had at the beginning of the week. So in tandem, a little bit of a relief for oil prices, but that doesn't detract from the overall trend, of course, in oil, which, as you can see here over the last couple of days, has been lower. Um, on a daily continuation, this was that chart we were looking at um, yesterday. So if I quickly just remove one of my camera feeds here so you can actually see the full chart. Uh, so this encapsulates then much more of the bigger picture looking all the way back to the end of 2018. So really uh, a good two year snapshot of price movement in oil to give us the kind of extremities of the highs and lows of the range from trading north of 75 to down to 42 and where we are at the moment. Now we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but you can see the various uh, annotations on this chart. Uh, and you can see the impact that coronavirus has had on the demand, which we've discussed many times. The question mark, of course, with oil prices really from here is, is what OPEC plus are saying enough to mitigate this downturn and cause prices to go back up? Now, this time yesterday when we were talking, uh, prices looked like they were rebounding slightly as some of the rumors were swirling about the potential 500,000 up to 900,000 barrel per day cut, but seemingly... Uh, this morning, according to the press, Russia and Saudi, the two main players within that pact uh, at loggerheads and what's the best step forward. Obviously, for Saudi Arabia, if you think about it from a fundamental perspective, they've got a long term plan to implement in their Vision 2030, which requires them to diversify the economy uh, and their revenue streams, which means that they need a high degree of income because their kind of break even point, if you like, for their for their government spending has increased. So they would like prices definitely much further north, whereas Russia doesn't have quite the same uh, kind of pain threshold on a price point. Um, and so they, the latter being a little bit more reluctant to just pull the trigger and cut supply just yet. So we continue to, to monitor that uh, quite closely. Um, otherwise, the other assets, uh, gold up a little, uh, recovering from some of the losses that were seen late yesterday uh, just after we had that big push up on Wall Street obviously a, a pretty firm finish across the major indices and if I was looking at uh, T-notes pretty similar story uh, I wouldn't say the gold and the T-note move being up 
10 bucks and six ticks respectively is a, is a form of the kind of risk appetite for this morning. I just think it's a bit of a natural retracement from some of the move uh, with some profit taking on the shorts yesterday in gold uh, and a 10 year. Uh, currency markets, the, the Dixie's just taking a bit of a, a knock more recently as Europe has come in. So as you can see, Euro dollar and cable on the top left looking a little bit more perky this morning. Um, I'll leave Sam to go over the technicals, but from a fundamental point of view, there really hasn't been anything that I've seen uh, regarding the UK that would be particularly, um, that you could pin the strength that we're seeing at the moment here in cable. Uh, just having a quick look though on this cable chart, just in regard to the highs that we were seeing yesterday. So we're just testing that at the moment. And you can see there's some previous other points of, you know, just quite obvious from support and resistance point of view uh, where we are at the moment. So i uh, be interested to see how we play out. And uh, just quite interested to see as well, uh, as I said, Sam's going to talk over this more, but let's have a look at that FIB retracement of where we are at the moment. And we're right on the 38.2 here, which was yesterday's high. So pretty significant point here. If cable can get above that, it might well open up a little bit further more upside. Uh, but we're just seeing around the first tests of that right now. Uh, that fib retracement from the high that we had uh, at the, the day of Brexit, but then the gap down as the red lines were drawn and that big sell-off that we had on Monday and the prevailing low that was seen yesterday uh, to where we are right now on that reversal. So worth keeping an eye on from a technical point of view. Um, all right, well, let's get stuck into some headlines uh, and then the guys can go over the technicals. But coronavirus, not going to spend too much time on this. I think we're all aware now of the current way of which markets, at least, are looking at this situation. And so despite confirmed cases now heading to 25,000 and just shy of 500 total deaths, uh, the market not being uh, spooked by this. And I'd say it's kind of dropping away a little bit in the, the macro order of of driving forces at the moment. The one thing, of course, that most people were talking about yesterday was this. I'm sure he would have seen uh, the tweets and, uh, and people banding around images of a certain company share price, and that was Tesla. Uh, so Tesla has had a monumental uh, year so far. And let's not forget, we're only in the beginning of February. By the time the market closed yesterday, the stock, even though it saw a big fall right before the close, the stock is still up 112% on the year. And, and if we actually have a look at this, so, so let me just be clear about this. We're, we've had one month of the year and the stock is up 112%. <laughs> this isn't like year end, this is one month in. Um, so given what we've seen here, and if you have a look at this chart, this overlays uh, five different uh, auto manufacturers. Uh, the other four you'll be very familiar with, of course, Ford, General Motors, Toyota, who's the big monster out there in terms of the actual size and market cap, uh, and then Volkswagen. But if you actually look at Tesla, which is the black line at the bottom and what January has added to the company, um, to put this into some other terms, uh, their, their market value now is greater than all four of those um, or all three of these other companies put together, that being General Motors, uh, Volkswagen and Fiat, uh, if you were putting it that way. So, yeah, just quite incredible, really. And, and, and to maybe look at it in a different way, this is what the stock price looks like over the last th three months. And it's just uh, quite incredible. If you look at it year to date over the course of the last month, then, you know, we were trading at 450. Uh, we did get up uh, kind of around 950 yesterday before, just before the close, you might have seen this happened. Uh, a move that knocked 100 billion off their, um, or 100 um, dollars off their share price at that point, and it came about 10 minutes before the close. Uh, reasoning behind that, there isn't any, but this is the nature of when a stock rise rises as fast as it has done. What are people uh, attributing this move to? Well, I would say it's predominantly a short squeeze. I think if you were uh, listening to the media not that long ago. There's a lot of big money out there that were shorting Tesla. And so inevitably then, when the stock starts rising as it has done, there's a lot of people out there feeling the pain and losing a lot of money. 
and having to bail on those shorts and then inevitably you get this big squeeze higher and that knocks out other people and then it just gets really exaggerated it's the mother of all squeezes if you like of what we've seen uh, from a more uh, technical point of view I guess you know record revenue numbers by the company and recent earnings uh, the opening of a new key factory in China if you remember they've made quite a close tie with the Chinese government as well uh, and then a degree I guess of a little bit of the fear of missing out people just jumping on wanting to ride it up a little bit of the the Bitcoin mentality I'm sure uh, also coming in uh, and just leading to this this movement um, overall what do I think I mean look I'm not a single stock picker by any means but um, the way of which this share price has risen would indicate then if history is any guide on other similar stock price movements that you generally see when a stock has risen that quickly 40 percent almost in two days it's got to come back at some point and when it does it's going to be fairly violent albeit uh, the shares will still probably remain highly elevated and for the year uh, a, a move of this magnitude of 40 percent you would say is probably reaching a top and psychologically obviously we've got close to a thousand bucks um, you probably would have seen on Twitter I had a text from my brother last night reminding me that he bought Tesla at $250 and he just wanted to rub my, my, my nose in it uh, but, but uh, and, and then just to boot I told him you, you should get rid of that and he got rid of it right at the very top what a jammy guy he is but hey that's just the way the cookie crumbles I guess uh, but moving on away from Tesla uh, so for oil prices uh, as I said I've really covered this story with that quick look at the crude chart already uh, we did see a, a moderate rebound yesterday but I think it's quite telling that prices have come back quite a bit from those highs yesterday and that to me is the market um, kind of testing the, the, the will if you like of OPEC plus and, and trying to call their bluff because you know, as I've mentioned before, the usual staggered approach of, uh, of what they do is they try to verbally intervene, intonate towards taking some kind of action before they actually do. And I think the market sees right through that these days. And so if we have a, another test and a push down, and particularly we've got the oil inventories coming out later, and if they're bearish, I think we do see another down day at the moment. Uh, and that's just really, I think, speculators are going to push the price, knowing that we can open the trap door somewhat if we can break through the previous low seen a day or so ago uh, and really test the resolve of, of OPEC, who I don't think are really going to step into the market and, and aggressively cut supply unless we get down to around the 45 region. Um, we did have the API crude oil inventories last night, uh, and this kind of sets the stall then for what to expect from the DOEs. Uh, the crude number was bearish in the sense that the build was bigger than it anticipated, 4.18 million against the expected three. Cushing a build just shy of a million, gasoline just shy of two million, also slightly larger than expected. Distillates was a draw of 1.78 million. That data, of course, coming out this afternoon at 3.30 London time. Um, we did have the results come out. Uh, I believe his name is, is, is pronounced Boudigay. Uh, leads in Iowa caucuses as delayed results unfold. You remember there was those technical issues yesterday of getting the results out. Uh, but this, this chap has basically come out of nowhere uh, and he's beating off all of the main contenders. Uh, Bernie Sanders is a close second. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, then Joe Biden, uh, lagged in fourth place. Uh, I've not really read too much about this Buttigieg gentleman other than uh, he's pretty much the antichrist of Trump, uh, being the fact that he's a homosexual. Uh, he's uh, very much uh, of a political stance that would be opposing that of the kind of aggressiveness of what Trump has been saying on various different key issues. And I guess that when you have someone like Trump, who's a, uh, you know quite almost polarized in his view and stance that he has, then the natural uh, recourse for that normally is you get a, an absolute opposing force become quite a, a present and quite a, a, a an ability to catch sentiment because of the almost uh, division of which someone of Tr uh, Trump's approach creates and so this seems to be the natural reaction effect here and, and definitely 
uh, this chap has taken out some of the more um, kind of regular contenders that we're used to hearing. So definitely one to watch. But going forward in terms of the session and the, the days and weeks ahead, I mean, the markets do not do not care about this for the moment. Let's just be clear. Uh, this isn't a market moving factor. Uh, so I'd leave it to the side for the moment. Um, the other thing as well that that's quite interesting is that I believe he's a he was ex armed forces as well so definitely ticking uh, a lot of interesting boxes that would be quite the quite the opposite um, of Trump and to give them quite a clear alternative in a divisive vote if there were to be one uh, if the two were in fact to, to lead out against each other it would be incredibly interesting uh, from an earnings perspective a couple to be aware of uh, you've had Siemens their actual shares were down uh, a touch this morning, they posted weaker than expected first quarter industrial profit. They were down just short of 2%. Um, we have had BMP Paribas, uh, one of the bigger French stocks report. Uh, they keep pace with Wall Street as trading rebounds. Uh, bank slightly cuts profitability targets amid falling rates. Uh, just having a look on the kind of scoreboard, can't see the actual uh, initial opening prices. But um, a few others, initial movers, Vodafone up about 2%, Adidas down about 2%. Uh, are some of the moves and shakers this morning uh, but overall not too much there to really force things but do bear in mind that Siemens is one of the largest companies in the DAX so it could act as a bit of a, a, a tailwind for the, the index this morning um, looking at the calendar for today um, the European morning fairly quiet the, the PMI data we're going to see is the final readings so these shouldn't then by default be too market moving uh, if anything, looking at the currency markets, looks like a little bit of uh, dollar movement with th both those major pairs moving a little higher at the moment. Uh, but U.S. afternoon, certainly uh, things, well, before I get to the U.S., U.K. services PMI is coming out at 9.30. Now, that one, that will be one to watch. Uh, and the reason for that is that actually we've had about uh, a pretty decent bounce in the PMI data out of the U.K. for manufacturing in particular. Uh, and that coming on the coattails, obviously, of the, the kind of positive um, feed through from the majority government from the election that we had at the end of last year. Uh, the service number really is the key of the three, given the, the way our economy is structured and its dependency on services. So that's coming at 9.30. Uh, markets are expecting basically an unchanged reading from previous, but we do have a range of 52.4 to 53.5. And as per usual, remember what we saw... Um, I think it was some, uh, the head of the Bank of England, there was some very um, suspect price movement coming just before the, uh, the announcement of their, their unusual split that they had on their decision to hold rates. So I'd just be mindful of keeping an eye on sterling going into this data point if we see any other uh, kind of erratic price movement going into it. But bear in mind, the pound has already been fairly bid this morning. So if we did get a strong number, perhaps that is enough to help us break that technical point of resistance, which you can see the market is respecting at the moment. So that FIB level with yesterday's high uh, is just holding proceedings at the moment until that number comes out, uh, I would imagine. Having a look then into the US session, we've got a couple of key economic data points, actually, really three. Uh, ADP national employment, so that's the first one up. So this often acts as the precursor, of course, for non-farm payrolls. Uh, so this is private payrolls, and the report is based on actual payroll data of about 24 million employees. So it's seen as a fairly uh, weighty uh, precursor for, for Friday. And the last number that came out was 202,000. That was the most since April in the last reading that we had, and it was way above market expectations. Uh, for today, the headline is expected to pull back, though, to around 156 from, from 202. But then later, we get the ISM non-manufacturing. Remember what we had at the beginning of the week. The manufacturing sector was a great number, smashing estimates and putting the first expansion of the manufacturing sector in six months. So the non-manufacturing number is going to be closely watched. That's expected to remain unchanged, though, at 55 and uh, this is what that pattern of the last 12 readings looks like at the moment. Uh, I'm sure you probably would have caught some of the State of Union address, the one the president gives on an annual basis. He was very much talking up the economy. 
and how, you know, as a validation of his policies and the work that he's done since he came into the White House, um, obviously didn't talk about the fact that manufacturing activity had slowed remarkably over the course of um, the last year or so with the trade war with China. However, these recent data points, particularly at manufacturing on Monday, and I'd be interested to see if these other two can follow suit, have rebounded sharply. And so if that is the case, well, all the more valid he can be in just kind of banging that drum for his political agenda. Uh, from a corporate earnings perspective, a few things today, pre-market, Merck, General Motors, aftermarket, one of the bigger firms would be Qualcomm, uh, those kind of more social media sensitive type names like Twitter, Pinterest, uh, and one of the recent IPOs, Uber, all coming out tomorrow. All right, that is it from me. Going to hand you over to Sam. So, going to come off the mic. Let me just switch a few things over. He's heading over now. Here he comes. Yeah, hi guys, good morning. I hope, uh, hope we're doing well. Yeah, Euro and, <coughs> and the pound is catching uh, the hot air balloon to the upside. A bit of uh, reaction now you would expect to the, the pivot, some resistance from overnight, some lows from yesterday uh, to come in in that Euro. It's a bit of a zone. I've got it marked up in the uh, the other room that I've just been in and, and you can see the low to the high and the pivot. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice area uh, where if you were looking for uh, a bit of confirmation to, to go short, this could be the, the point where uh, that could come through. You can see the importance as well, just having a look here at the, the lows that we had from this morning, from yesterday, uh, and then Monday as well. So three tests of that low, that's another opportunity, should you uh, actually rather the continuation, uh, a break of, of that level to, to come back in, to go short, uh, really targeting the low that would be on uh, on Friday the 31st, was it the 31st, the Friday? Uh, yes, it was, yeah. So that could be a little opportunity there. But, you know, let's not, you know, hire that the, uh, the dollar is weak today. So if we get a break of this level, uh, I think the the obvious targets would be towards that pivot point where I know a couple of guys were, were short yesterday from here in the morning and that was obviously a, a decent trade back down to towards that S1. It may perhaps painfully slow, but... Uh, still a, a good trade and, and good opportunity uh, could come from that area again. So the, the euro just under, or the dollar I should say, just under a bit of pressure in early trade. But uh, I think if you're remaining of that, that short bias, this pivot, uh, this trend line, the highs from yesterday, the lows from yesterday morning, it's uh, a pretty key resistance point. But of course, you know, if uh, you've been short over the last couple of days, a break above that, you might just be put off uh, a bit going forward. So. Those would be the, the main zones that I'd be focusing on today. To the downside, those lows. To the upside, pretty much where we're trading now. Uh, and then towards the R1, yesterday's highs uh, in that mix as well. Having a look over the pound, yes, pushing higher. Yes, you've got the data out in, in a moment. And uh, actually against quite a few uh, of the, the crosses, the pound has broken some nice levels where uh, it could well be a bit of a retracement to come in. It's just whether you really want to take that risk on before uh, the data point uh, at half nine or not. But you can see the importance of this level here that Ant was talking about uh, earlier on. So yeah, keep a watch. Uh, just for those other pairs, a lot of them do look like this and that we had pushed higher uh, this morning and, and trend lines had been broken or, or key horizontal uh, support or resistance, depending on which way it, you know, you're looking at it, whether euro pound or pound against whatever market. So potentially later on, just having to look back for these kind of areas here to come back into play, breaks of trends or those horizontal uh, support resistance points for uh, the continuation of a bit of pound strength should that come in. Uh, you can see the importance of that level here. It, it's uh, resistance, I mean support from uh, last night and this morning with the pivot. Uh, that's uh, the zone that I'd be looking at to the downside. If we were to have strong numbers uh, for the, uh, the pound, looking here against the dollar, where could be some nice targets. Well, I know we, we, we went through it quite quickly on Monday, thanks to Boris. Um, but here, just looking around there, just above the R1, it's a bit of a bit of a zone up towards that 131. The, the lows from Thursday evening, Friday as well, uh, just around that point, I think would be a, 
pretty good line in the sand and if it was to push on as well you can see 131.10 some nice price action uh, around there so worth keeping a you know watch on what pound the pound does for the next hour data has certainly seemed as though it's been leaked the bank of england was obviously leaked and you've got someone uh, at the uh, the press conferences a certain squawk that are, are releasing the or the i've got telephone lines to traders so yeah if it goes higher you can presume it's going to be be better so maybe that opportunity comes uh if uh, if it's worse than expected. Just kick out the corner of my eye here, you see the, the stocks in the US pushing higher, and, and this is important because we're not far away uh, from coming to some very important levels here in the Dow, just those highs from last week, and um, the, the sort of the gap fill never really happened on the Dow futures. It happened, yes, on the S&P, and you can see we're coming up to uh, that high from yesterday, which was almost that point from the 24th. So really, Keep a watch on this uh, above 3300 uh, on the Dow, the Nasdaq as well, just catching a, a bid and pushing uh, there. Let's have a quick look over over that there, the, the Dow on a uh, <laughs> new all time high. Coronavirus? Or coronavirus. Uh, but yeah, the, the SP and the, the Dow, a bit of catch up to do, uh, but worth just keeping an eye on, on how this reacts, certainly to the S&P 3305. Uh, in terms of levels two, perhaps get back in, should it retrace? Because obviously you don't really want to go chasing this market for now, uh, but you can see we broke above this trend, came back to retest it. That's almost what I want to see from the pound later on. Uh, but for the, the S&P, three points until you get to that high. Uh, if that is to continue, I would say you've got to prefer the short in, in gold and you know whether you're already in this here. I mean, what a, a level back from yesterday was the low before we broke through 1565 66 I know uh, a couple of people were looking at that trade as well if this picks up and S&P and equities go higher well gold has to come lower uh, which it is doing so now it's not one where you jump in right now though because of course you would like that that stop to be above that pivot so if you're going in the next opportunities are of course or maybe some more confirmation around that area or a break of this key trend and you can see you've got your free test in 15 minute up here on the, the 60 minute as well, where it would look to come in a previous high of the day. So it's a really key level around 1560, where the next opportunity could come for gold if that is to break through. Some really nice uh, trading yesterday in gold, it has to be said, um, where trend lines are broken, you got them retested. Uh, previous levels of support came back into play to act as resistance for that final push lower. Uh, and you know, I have to say, this market over this this year has been incredibly resilient to any push higher in equities. But if you know the coronavirus etc. can't kill stocks, well, gold you would imagine has to perhaps come down a bit, especially if some U.S. data starts to improve. I think actually non-farm payrolls on Friday could be slightly interesting. Anyway, back to the market at play. A break of that trend interests me. Key levels to the upside around that 1568 level, previous low of the day, basically S1 from yesterday uh, as well. If this trend line goes, I don't see much stop in it really. Obviously, you've got other targets to go into play, but that low that we had from yesterday uh, as well, and you can see why that's important, was also the low from the 21st as well. So one to keep an eye on, especially if stocks can push higher. Quick look over at the Aussie. Uh, shout out to a couple people. In, uh, in stage two that took this trade and we were saying when we were eyeing it up it was just like is it actually too easy this trade <laughs> they got the 50 percent fib you got the r1 you got the previous high of the range that we couldn't get out of one two three four five times came back and well wow, what a trade indeed and it's now on the the high of the day thanks to a bit of dollar weakness as well thanks to stocks pushing higher have we seen the low for the aussie for the short term there'll be arguments for yes but of course if you do believe that this market uh, still has some way to go to the downside, that the bushfire impact has not been completely priced in, there's you know some decent levels. Let me just get rid of this fib here to you know hurdle, shall we say that it's got to get through uh, to confirm a push higher. You know you could argue up towards that 68.36 level could be a nice place to get back in uh, for this trade. Uh, on that sort of break that we had on or the, the head and shoulders area. I know it was a false break, but once we did come back down, uh, you can see it was a pretty clean move. So keeping a, a watch on there, that would also be, if I was long, 
one of my targets after we get through maybe the 68 handle uh, that the 10th of December low. So Aussie, nice couple of days, looks to be continuing for now. The dollar weakness helping Euro push higher, but that's a key zone for sure around that pivot. Uh, the pound data coming out in less than an hour, everything to do with the pound seems to be leaked at the moment, so just be careful. Stocks pushing higher will help bring gold back lower, you would imagine. Hope everyone has a, a good trading day. Any questions, please do let us know. Uh, could be another interesting one.